Welcome to Art Smart. Today we're going to look at the top three most obscure Disney films, and I'm going to show you in order from what I think is the least obscure to the most obscure. The Alice films is obviously not just one film. It is a series of films uh, that was released in the 1920s, but these are all pretty rare to most Disney fans. Uh, these films were created during the silent film era. They were before Mickey Mouse, and this is really the first big success that Disney had. He had a live action girl interacting with a cartoon world of characters. And um, this is not necessarily a uh, rare thing when it comes to the animation industry at that time. Many people were combining animation and live action. But Disney uh, was special in that he put a live action girl into a cartoon world while pretty much everybody else is doing it the other way around, a cartoon in a live action world. So Walt had a very uh, novel idea, and it was successful for several years. It was released on a state rights basis uh, throughout the United States, meaning that independent distributors were sending the film all throughout the United States and selling it to individual state areas. And so this film was, uh, I'm sorry, this film series was pretty popular. Uh, it eventually faded out and Disney moved on to other projects, but this is his first big success and you should know about it. And I think it's pretty interesting to watch. Now, for the Newman Laughagram films, these were films that Walt Disney created in the 1920s. Again, this is a series of films, but most Disney fans will not know about it. Uh, these were the first films that Disney created, and he made them for the Newman Theater in Kansas City, where he was living at the time. Uh, he animated most of this himself, and you are looking at Disney's hand when he's drawing here. Now, the thing that's interesting about uh, this period, though, is Disney realized quickly that he was not a great animator, and he hired other friends of his that were a little bit more proficient, and he moved into more of a supervisor role, which he continued to do for the rest of his career. However, these films are interesting. They're adult-oriented uh, as opposed to most of the more family-oriented things that you usually see. You see uh, scenes here of a crook that's getting caught in Kansas City. Uh, you're about to see a advertisement that he's going to draw for women's stockings. Uh, this is the kind of thing that Disney really wouldn't get into, these kind of adult satirical things. He wouldn't get into that later on. But in this early period, he was doing what was popular, and he got himself a, a little bit of money in Kansas City, and he was able to start his career in an area that really was not a big uh, area for making films in any way, shape, or form. Uh, you're going to see him here in a second. He's uh, drawing uh, basically people that are getting into trouble in Kansas City. And then later on in this film, they actually uh, show some policemen coming out and busting people up on the street. But anyway, uh, we're going to move on to the last film here, the Academy Award Review of Walt Disney Films. This was released in 1937. This film is so rare, I don't even have clips for you. The only clips I've seen of it were uh, non-public domain prints from Mexico. Uh, in the United States, there just doesn't seem to be prints of this film out there, so I'm showing you stills. What this was, was Disney realized in 1937 that a lot of people did not believe that animated cartoons could hold an audience's attention for more than a few minutes. So he strung together several of his best films that uh, had won Academy Awards and had been up for them, and he put them in one package film. And he uh, distributed this kind of around uh, Hollywood and a few other places where uh, critics could see it and people in the industry could see that, yes, people would enjoy looking at an animated film. So really, these are just shorts packaged together, uh, and this ran for a short period of time. But it did help to show the industry that people could sit and watch a film for, uh, in this case, it was about 40 minutes and not get bored and their eyes wouldn't get sore looking at cartoons. People would very much enjoy it and would have a good time watching an animated film and be engaged. So this helped Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs in 1937 become successful and uh, become uh, a huge change in the animation industry as the industry moved towards feature films as opposed to doing short subjects. And so this small film is one that is important to the Disney history, uh, even though Disney seems to kind of have neglected it and forgotten it. It's a, it's a film that you don't really see much of anywhere. Anyway, I hope these three films make you a little bit more art smart. Please like this video and please subscribe to this channel for more content just like it. Have a great day.